What are you boys doing? What are you boys doing, Allie? Hmm? What are you boys doing? Eh? What's my big fellas doing? Eh? What's my boys? How's my big boys? Just hang on to the fist over here. What? 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 Let me come down, boys. Let me come down, boys. What? 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 So today, I got some rock stars here, let me tell you. These are Tuba's boys, Tuba and Karu. And uh, she's got two magnificent males here. And it's an amazing. Now, I'm pretty sure this big fella right here is Nico. Right here. I haven't got this big boy's name yet. But uh, this big Nico behind me here. I'll bring him up front. Well, that's you guys. What? Just give me a sec, Tuba. Let me get these boys up front. I'm up front, boys. But, 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 boys, but, but. Now, what you'll know about Tuba is probably one of the very best females in the world for hand or focus, loyalty, protection. She does everything. She's my one of my top females in every aspect. <laughs> Except perhaps uh, having, having pups. She has small litters and she's hard to get bred. But when she has pups, they're, they're the very best pups in the world. Now, the nature of these two boys is exactly the same as their mother, and they take not a lot from their dad. The, the, this handler focus, this ability to stay and want to be right by the handler is so profound in these two boys that uh, it's, it's quite amazing. Uh, quite honestly, if I stayed here for six hours, these boys would probably hang out. Um, they, they're, they're geared to come by the handler. Now, I'll, I'll tell you a story about, uh, about genetics and preservation breeding and, and history and how to keep the breed strong and all those things today, but you're going to see both sides of the coin today. Tuba's uh, was born in August of 2014, so we're talking uh, August of this year, she'll be seven years old. Now. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting to get a second female. She had a female in the first litter, and she never had another one. She's had all males. And for me now to try and get a uh, female out of her is, is proving to be very, very difficult. And she's missed catching quite a few times as well. Now that's, you can always attribute a percentage of that to the female and a percentage to the male. But I'm at a crossroads here because every time you retire a female, if I was to retire her now, she's had four litters, but I haven't got a female to carry this lineage on from her. I have her sister from the same litter, Tecla, and I have females from Tecla, but I, I do not have a female from Tuba. So I'm faced with a dilemma that I will most likely, just because she's had a very light workload, um, I'm going to take another litter out of tuba. Now, um, I'm totally fine with that because tuba has, she's in miraculous shape, like just, to, she's a miracle dog that way, and she does have small litters. She's had less in her whole group of litters than Tecla had in her first litter. So you can get kind of an idea there. Now, this is what makes it difficult for all genetics in all breeds, is you come to this point where this genetic is going to expire. So if, if on the female side, I could potentially keep one of the boys, and that's, that's an option I have. Come boy, 
You come by me here. Okay. You come. You come up by me here. Let me get that boy. You come by me here. Quit moving around. We can't see you over here. You come here by me. Come on. Come on. Come by me. Like a boy. What? Who am I? Now I keep the mail here, but uh, at the same time it's not the exact same thing. There's different aspects of the female. And females shorten up. The genetic on females shortens at dramatic pace compared to males. Males of course can breed much longer, plus they have way more pups, or potentially can. And so there's, uh, in the preservation world, almost all the work is to preserve the female because the female lines expire much faster. You can take a dog like Dakota, he sired pups at 11 years of age. Well, you're not getting a female to have a litter at 11. I mean, uh, it's not happening. Two of us had eight pups in total, and uh, Carew has eight almost every litter except two of us. So, two of us, two, uh, two would have to have litters for the next ten years to catch up to what Carew has in one. So you can see how male genetics hang in there for a long time. Female genetics are very hard for breeders to, to keep. And even on a, even if I keep a female, one half of her genetic material is gone. And so, take her mother. Her mother was, uh, I have the two females from her. I kept two others, but I couldn't get the other two to breed. Now, this is the whole, the whole theory of, wow, well, maybe that's not a good female to keep and all that nonsense. Well, if we all said that, we'd be exactly what's happening today. We're short of genetics, the genetic pool shortened right up. And so people didn't want to put the effort in to get the litters out, so they quit early, abandon the female, get another one. Well, pretty soon, um, lots of breeders would have quit after the second litter or two, and they wouldn't have been able to even try. Now, that's the wrong attitude. And yes, it's very expensive to keep a female around that literally just has one average litter in her lifetime. But for me in my line of work, what I do with the preservation, of course, I have to blend it out throughout all the litters. I have to balance it out. And, and uh, it, it's other factors. But because she is so superior in every other thing, this female is, is literally if, if you could find a better female in every aspect, I, I doubt you could. She even has better features than her sister. And Deck was one of the greatest. Nina's been her settle down. I'm tired of telling you to be quiet, mister. Nina, settle down. Nina, just chill out here and don't be goofing around. You're sitting with me now. Don't move. Don't move. No, no, no. I knew that was coming. Yeah, just sell down. Oh, boys. Good. Good. You want to just sit as long as I like. Don't move the muscle out of the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, as far as confirmation goes, color, mask, feet, legs, abilities, and their focus. So yeah, this is, these are the crossroads that breeders come to. And 
they have to make decisions based on all kinds of factors. And for me, the decision always comes down to the preservation of the genetic. And if the female is capable, I'll take the female out. And in this case, the female is capable. She's in incredible shape. She's had very light work. She's absolutely a flawless female in every aspect. So what we'll do is we'll take her out one more litter and we'll hope for a female. Now, I'll retain the breeding rights on all these boys, just like all the pups. <laughs> and if we don't get a female, so be it. We'll, we'll go to the, book, to the male. But uh, I'm still hoping that we get the female, of course, which I believe we will. <laughs> Tico, Tico. I just brought Tico in. I got techless cycling, right? Full heat yesterday, so it's total chaos at night last night. So she's winding down today, but today now the raven's coming into heat, so just ramps right back up. So yeah, this is the... Now, Tuba wasn't so fantastic in every aspect. Um, it, at, at the end of the day, I don't have those kinds of dogs. Um, I actually have the luxury of every dog that I have is at the very upper end of the spectrum. So uh, it's it's not like I have to make a real decision as to whether I should carry on because all my females are like this. But Tuba's kind of unique because Tuba's, Tuba carries a genetic material that uh, is one of the very, very old, old uh, lineages. She is a Ravenstone bloodline, and she is also one of the old lines out of Norway. And that, uh, that Norway bloodline is renowned for its own capabilities, its instinct capabilities. But they were also renowned because they were uh, lead hunters. They could hunt off or they could hunt on. And uh, what's fascinating about this genetic is not many people uh, know that aspect that uh, you, can, you can hunt on, lead or off. Now, for us, that's a crucial factor. And so this particular genetic, this on lead hunt capability runs in a lot of our lines and it makes for an incredible uh, experience with the dog if you want to hunt on lead. And it, it, it's really quite profound. And I've, uh, so so this, this genetic has a lot of things about it. And uh, we, will, uh, we will do our best to preserve this. We, we have daughters from Tecla, of course. We have uh, the brand new Varja, and we have Luna. I have Luna's daughter, and we have uh, we have the capability to get a litter out of that and another daughter. And I'll, I'll probably get a litter out of two of them with a daughter, but uh, the boys, the boys, good, good, the boys are good. But if I have to, I'll, I'll use one of the males to preserve that line. There's little tiny things that come in the female that don't come in the male. But he'll preserve almost all of it anyway. But there is just little aspects. And because we have the other females out of Tecla, we are preserving that. But this is how the genetic shortens up in, in any breed. Is that you come to the end of the life cycle of the female and if there has been no females in the in the lineage the the life cycle of the female starts going down and of course even even if tuba has a female pup Tico don't do that I'm talking even if tuba has a pup of course we only keep half of her material because obviously whatever male I use, now I'm using Karoo again, I'm pretty confident in that. 
not, or at least I am at this point. But at the same time, I have the potential to put Swix in, but because Swix is AI, I uh, probably wouldn't risk it on tuba. I'll probably naturally meet her to Peru. I know she'll catch. And I'll use Swix on Tecla. And that way I have a much greater chance of getting um, a better chance of catching with AI because Tecla is considerably more fertile. And that's uh, the route we go there. But the other two sisters, we're going to put the males back in with them and run them with the males again. We might get a new male and stick in there and see if they'll catch. They've been bred a few times and don't catch. But that's not to say they may not. They may. And so we will do what we can. Now they're half-sisters to Tuba, but that's totally fine. We will do what we can to see if we can't pull litter out of them. Uh, so yeah, that's the situation. Now Tuba, <coughs> of course, is invaluable when it comes to training because Varja, she needs a trainer. So does Luna's pups, they need a trainer. Because I never trained with the mother in most cases. I can train with Tecla, but much better to train with Tuba. So I can put those young pups with Tuba and train them. And Tuba's a miraculous trainer. She's a miracle dog. Um, Tuba's phenomenal that way. So these two pups, you see, they're quite honestly some of the very best pups in the world. Like there's no, nobody would dispute that. I mean, as far as hunting champions go, um, I, I don't know if you could get more hunting championships in, packed into the background of two dogs than what's in these two. There's Nordic, there's multiple Nordic champions, there's triple champions, there's it, it's just non-stop crazy. Um, and, and then of course, on the confirmation side, the Ravenstone Kennel, I believe they still hold the, the record for the most wins at the Big Crow Show, so these guys all have Norwegian uh, show champions, they have Finnish show champions, they have, and of course if they're Norwegian or Finnish show champions, they're obviously hunt champions first. So, uh, uh, these are, at, at the very, very upper end of the spectrum, these boys. But we'll give her a whirl with tuba again, I'll feed her a ton of fish, I've been feeding her fish all the time anyway. But uh, look at the coat on this magnificent dog. Oh my God, she's such a magnificent dog. And these guys are fabulous, can be, I can't believe it. But anybody could, there was only two of them. She's such a good mother. You guys are good, boy. You guys are good. You guys just chill out. All right, well that's a pretty good video with book two, but you guys just stay, you don't move, stay. Good to us. Uh,